Today's discussion grew out of my research for the Doctorate of Musical Arts degree from the University of Alabama. This presentation provides a pedagogical study of five pieces for younger pianists by 20th century French composers. These works can be used as an introduction to modern French piano music for elementary through early advanced students. This subject is of great importance as such works are hard to find in student level repertoire in method books. Each work is published individually by the French editor Gerard Bilodeau and it is part of a collection of 27 teaching pieces specifically designed for young people. Don't worry, I'm not going through all 27, we're just going to focus on five today. The selections will be presented in, order, in the order of progressive study, each accompanied with a detailed discussion. I will be showing you five different composers to better expose your student to the French modern style. It is possible to use all five pieces with one student in a graduated manner. However, if you want to pick and choose from this collection to more closely reflect where your student's current level is, that works as well. So I just kind of call this my own mini collection and I'm so thrilled to be sharing it with you today. These solo piano works equip the student with the skills necessary to play more difficult repertoire in the French 20th century style. I will discuss some examples as we go, and you'll find things such as embracing colorful sonorities, incorporating complex rhythms, meter changes, utilizing special pedaling. All these things will be brought out in these five pieces that I am sharing with you today. And I also wanted to mention before we dive in that these pieces are also suitable for adult students. If you have some adult students studying with you, the music uh, pu published by Bilodeau lacks colorful artwork and the large fonts for pieces that are often used for young children. So it actually can go for any age group. And um, if you're thinking, wow, this would really work for my adult student, um, you would find this a great benefit for them as well. All right, so we're going to get started now with the first piece, and this is entitled Je by Darius Mio. Mio was born in 1892 and died in 1974. And just in case you're not very familiar with some of these French composers, I'll pause at the beginning of each piece and give a brief bio about each composer. He was born to a Jewish family, of course, in France, and Mio is often recognized as a member of the well-known Lacis, a group of musicians slash composers studying at the Paris Conservatory. He did immigrate to the United States in 1940. He held teaching posts at Mills College and the Aspen Music Festival. He returned to France after 1971, and he became a professor of composition at the Paris Conservatory. He was a prolific composer, and he is unique in that he willingly and purposely composed music for amateurs and young children, as well as writing for many different genres. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick overview of this piece, Je, and the title is actually translated to English as game or play, which I think is really fun. He composed this piece about 1950. It's a miniature waltz, but it definitely has the modern sound. And it's attractive because it's simplistic and it's short. 
It's specifically written for young pianists of modest technique. Mio uses longer note values on the downbeat, so that's typical of the waltz style. There's a consistent four bar grouping, creating an accessible phrase structure for a young and an experienced performer. And so you can see on the slide that it's an ABA form. There's 52 measures total, and it's about two pages long on the Bilodeau edition. The A section measures one through 20, the B section, a bit shorter, measures 21 through 33, and then we finish up 34 through 52 at the return of the A prime section. There's some unique features about this piece that I am delighted to share with you. It has modes. So instead of using just the major or minor keys, we find that he is using modes throughout this piece. It's a great way to introduce this topic to your student or maybe review with your student. The Mixolydian mode is used most throughout this piece. And so if you're trying to remember which one was the Mixolydian mode, it's basically the major scale with a flat seven. He also uses a little bit of the Dorian mode later in the piece, which basically is the natural minor scale, but with the sixth note raised half a step. The A section begins, so this is measures one through eight. You can follow along in some of the examples showing behind me. So in measures one through eight, you'll see the C mixolydian scale, and the inclusion of the black key B flat here is creating that half step that's expected between the sixth and seventh scale degrees of this mode. The following four bar group, measures nine through 12, begins in D mixolydian mode found in examples one, excuse me, example 1 5. So these measures together represent the opening measures transposed up half a step here at measures nine through 12. So this is transposition up half a step. So we have right off the bat a beautiful example of the Mixolydian modes, uh, mode, and then at the end of the A section, we kind of get to the end of this first section, we have a return to C major, and so you find a clear use of the tonic and the dominant chords with the conclusion of the section. Section B, there is a four measure unit that does seem to center on C Dorian, that's measures 25 through 28, and then when we return to that A section at the end of the piece, we actually conclude instead of a major five to one progression, we are actually doing C minor, or excuse me, G minor, the minor five chord going to a one. So again, we're hinting a little bit of that B flat from C mixolydian is creeping back into that final progression of chords, a minor five to a one. So just giving you a little idea there of the modes and the tonal centers that he is using for this piece. Now I'm going to move forward to the pedagogical highlights that I want to talk to you about for Je. The articulation is uncomplicated for an elementary student. There's no staccato required. The slur is the primary articulation goal, but the good news is all mark slurs are just simply one measure in length and use adjacent notes and fingering. So you can see this in the example below. So there's three measures here. You notice in the first measure, the right hand has the legato marked in the D, E, F passage. And then the left hand on the second measure shown, you're seeing the left hand do adds the two note chords there with legato. Um, and then a little bit of the right hand returning on that last set of two measures, you see the legato phrasing there. So very simplistic, nothing um, too stressful for the students. The tempo here is marked without haste or hurry. And so that's an advantageous, we're not in a big hurry for these young performers, you can take your time. It's also interesting to note here that Debussy's piece, Le Peu Coulant, translating as slower than slow, shares this character of an unhurried waltz tempo. So I just wanted to point that out, that's a really neat connection. The tempos are very similar here, and they're both in this waltz of timing. Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on fingering. That's always a big question mark, and this is a great place to start a student uh, with the elementary level. The fingering here in Je does include notes both inside and outside the five finger hand position. The fingering suggested in this Bellado edition does provide guidance, although there are a few places where you might consider some alternative options. So this is the first example I'm sharing with you here. The left hand is covering an entire range of an octave within measures one through three. So you notice the first half note there in measure one. Left hand, we have this middle C. And then by the end of measure three, we're an octave lower 
on that C there. So how do we get the hand to cover that distance? And I'm assuming with younger students here, maybe not quite comfortable with the full octave span. So the Bilodeau edition here marked in the small print right underneath the bass clef, you see that the um, two to three, we're starting with the middle C on finger two, turning the thumb under the B flat, and then we have A, fifth finger D, so just a five finger position. And then you could do a second finger on G and stretch down to that fifth finger on the C. So there's a little bit of a stretch there. You see in the larger format marked letter B that I suggest you could do five or one, five, one, five, two, five finger positions and just shift down one white key. So either option would be very easy to implement with your student. An example two, You'll notice that the right hand plays all eight tones found in a scale. I do want to be careful here. The composer is not seeking to establish a tone or cent tonal center, but the fingering use can still be borrowed from scalar passages. So one such passage found in example 1-5 is from measures 9 through 12. And so we start on E, we move through F sharp G all the way till we reach the next highest E an octave above that. So the right hand can you easily use the scale fingering from E major or E minor, really. So the one, two, three, cross under, one, two, three, four, five. So this ascending pattern gives you a perfect place to insert that scale fingering. It's kind of a fun fact here, I just wanted to point out, the D mixolydian in measures 9 through 12 here shares the same pitch group with G natural minor. So I just I like to find little tidbits of information to share with uh, students, and so you might find that interesting. All right, also the use of scale fingering addresses hand extensions and helps students to immediately plug in knowledge they already possess. So it's a win-win situation there. Tackling the ever-present fingering puzzle in smaller works like je is valuable, and in this case could eventually translate to a bigger piece such as Debussy's Children's Corner, uh, the Jimbo's Lullaby about the elephant here. This piano work begins with the left hand solo that can be played within the five finger or pentatonic hand position but then moves into more extended hand positions, obviously. So you can see here on the clip below, the fingering, um, the fingering marked with the letter B is alternative fingers that uses a stronger third and fourth finger on the repeated note C and D. But the letter A keeps everything within that five finger motion. So all the way through those uh, opening measures of Jumbo Zolabai, you could use that five finger position. So just showing you a little tidbit of something from a larger piece, a larger French piece. So at the end of each piece, I will pause and we'll talk about for what students would this piece be appropriate. So I said, well, we're using scalar finger patterns. There's no pedaling, the textures are thin, there's a limited dynamic range, the tempo without haste, that's a plus, a familiar ABA form set up in the modern style. The largest interval span is an octave, and at times, Mio even creates this distance between two hands instead of just the one hand that we discussed. So in my conclusion, I said, well, I think this is appropriate for an elementary level student who's already begun training in the basic piano techniques and desires to study the modern style. Would I give this to a student with a month of lessons? No, but maybe they've been studying for two or three years um, and are ready to move into something a little more challenging. So that would be who I would suggest could study this piece.